All right, good evening. Welcome to the Amherst Planning Board, Wednesday, November 20th, 2019, 7 p.m. It's actually 7.05, uh, town room, town hall. Uh, first thing we have on the agenda is minutes, and we do have one set of minutes from um, October 30th, 2019. Yes, Chris. You also have a set of minutes that were sent to you electronically and you received them last time in your packet for uh, October 2nd and Ms. McGowan wanted uh, more opportunity to review them so uh, we put off the review of those till tonight. So you have two sets of minutes. Okay. So I'll start with the older one, the one that we started with at the last meeting, October 2nd. Um, a revision came out. It was sent to us electronically. Does anyone have any other comments or corrections? Is that a hand up, Janet? No. I, I had one correction just to clarify the comments by Mark Cavanaugh of Florence Bank, um, just to sort of simply state that the Florence Bank is worried that tenants and guests will use Florence Bank for overflow parking. I think I'd just say that more clearly. Can you tell me where that is in the minutes? Uh, it was in the public comment section by, oh. Any other comments or corrections? I see none. Do I hear a motion? Move to approve the October 2 minutes. Sorry, move to approve the October 2 minutes. A second. Second. Uh, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. And unanimous. I'm sorry, who seconded? Jack. Yes, unanimous. Uh, we'll move on to the October 30th. Uh, these are new. First time we looked at them, does anyone have any corrections, issues? I think you, I, did, you did receive these in these your the email. These are the minutes that were circulated by email earlier, yes. The electronic packet. Is everyone all good? I move to approve the minutes of October 30. I'll second. Uh, any other discussion? I don't see any. Uh, Janet, all in favor? Raise your, yep. And unanimous. Good. So those are done. Thank you. Um, okay, so item two is public comment period. This is where we ask any of the attendees if they would like to speak on something that is not an item that's on our agenda to raise their hand and they can come up for um, like a three minute talk. Uh, if it's all right, if you come up, you can stay, she'll come up here. Um, sure, come up and like I said, make sure the green light is on, say your name and address to the minute takers and welcome. I'm Maura Keen from Dennis Drive in Amherst, and I just wanted to um, bring up to the planning board, we talked about a little at the zoning subcommittee, that on Monday, the town council affirmed the recommendations of the Energy and Climate Action Committee to make Amherst as a town um, not go above the carbon use of 2016 year and by 2050 at the latest to be totally carbon neutral. Um, and this goes along with the UN, I forgot all the initial studies of 2018. It should be a worldwide um, goal, but we can only control what happens in Amherst. So that um, I was hoping that the planning board in evaluating all the projects that come before it would put that in as a, maybe as a goal for the projects or as an aspiration to make them as energy efficient as possible. And maybe when the zoning laws are redone, that can be incorporated. I know it's net zero is, um, 
is um, in effect for public buildings, but I think it should be encouraged for private as well and for homes. And um, there was also something else brought up by Laura Drucker, who's the chair of the committee, that renters who pay their own utilities are actually paying a portion of those utility costs to Mass Save, which should be used to do energy audits on the buildings in which they're renting. And if the landlords don't order those, don't arrange for those energy audits, then the renters don't see the benefits because they're paying more and it, so that should also, I don't know if that fits in the planning board or where it goes, but um, anyways, um, I think we should look into that and, um, and, and the net, the energy carbon neutral is not just for building. It might involve planting more trees or using electric vehicles or carbon sequestration plans, but the building is also part of it. Thank you. I'm sure we'll be getting some information from the town council goals. And is it, I think it got referred to uh, a committee, and I'm sure they'll be, it, or, <clears throat> but how to actually do it and implement, there'll be more information coming. So we'll watch for that. Uh, they decided that each individual project as it came up or each individual resolution would go before the um, resource, Community Resources Committee and the Finance Committee. But the overall I mean. goals are established and they'll be monitored to make sure so that we don't wait till 2029 to suddenly try and meet the goals. Sure. When you say, um, you know, carbon neutral is, I mean, zero, that's for the, all the residents, not just the government. When you say Amherst, you mean the whole town? The whole town. Okay. And the whole world, hopefully, too, but. Thanks. Uh, and there's no one else here to speak on some, okay. So we will move on. Um, so it's uh, 7.13. I'll read the preamble. So continuing the hearing for uh, Riverside Organics, SPR 2020-03, Jonathan Griffine, is that? Uh, Riverside Organics, 555 Belchtown Road, request for site plan review, approval to construct and operate a marijuana product manufacturer and marijuana micro business under section 3.363 of the zoning bylaw, map 18D, parcel two, PRP zoning district. This public hearing is being continued from November 6th, 2019. Welcome back. Good evening. Um, I assume you want to tell us, give us some more updates and especially on the information we had asked for at the last meeting. And I just wanted to say, um, in our electronic packets, we got information, and Chris, so we should have a bunch of things, and we'll go over that if they're not um, brought up. Uh, excuse me, there was oh, a oh. USB with a bunch of files uh, with business plan and standard operating procedures, okay. which was given to Christine without her being made aware. Um, you folks will be sent that in the next day, I'm assuming, for your, your okay. review. And will those be sent by email, or are they draw like are they big or? There are drawings mm -hmm. that I can copy. There is a USB, and I'm not sure exactly what's on here, but I think there's a management plan on here. Everything's on. And Mr. Gerfine referred to SOP, which I don't really know what that is, but standard he, operating procedures. Standard operating <sighs> procedures. So like all that information. Cultivation and security and. For every facet of it, they want the state wanted, and I thought you wanted as well. Yeah, so we will okay. um, send this information to you, and I apologize for not having sent it sooner. I didn't quite know what it was, so we will make sure that you get all of that information for your next meeting. Great. So, so. since we last met, I invited the uh, Mike Roy and his superior, Jeff, I didn't catch his last name, down to the site, we walked through and around. I went over doors, exits, egress, gates, all the other various issues that 
the fire department is concerned with, as well as uh, fire extinguishers and the requirements, et cetera. Um, they were satisfied with everything. They are in the process, I'm assuming they already did, they did not send an email yet to Christine Rustrup uh, regarding the review of the fire plan and spec sheets. There was only one issue with a, an exit door, if it should have a push bar fire exit on it, which that will be decided by the town building inspectors and the fire uh, personnel referred me to them when I get to that point uh, with either Dave W and I forget the other inspector's name. Um, was there something else from fire? Uh, I think that was it. Oh, right. In relation to Janet's concern, um, in mulling it over, I think that probably having an exit door not on the front facing where the parking spots are, where one and two are labeled right here where my cursor is, but to have a fire exit, one-way exit, egress out only right here in the back corner, just to, um, I guess it would be unsafe not to have some type of other egress even with everything being built new and safe, you know, just God forbid there should be a door there. So I'm going to agree with Janet and uh, buy a one-way security door out, a uh, fire door with all required whatever to code, et cetera. Um, in relation to fire, that is it. Um, the compost, oh, the, uh, the egress from the neighbor. Um, as far as I know, the definition of an egress is not necessarily defined to a certain location, but just a general rite of passage. In this particular situation, an egress was granted in the past where it was a compost, which you were concerned about. The compost, because of the uh, concom, did not want it near the wetlands. I eliminated it. I also moved the other compost pile out of the 100 foot zone from the wetlands. Um, there was concern about amount of soil, et cetera. What I've decided to do is to compost the soil uh, with a tiller and to throw some hydrated lime on it. That will sterilize any uh, molds, bacteria, anything farm that I don't want back in the facility. So I will be able to reuse the compost pile by um, you know, just composting whatever soil I put out there. So that should take care of that issue. Um, there's more than enough room there for the compost pile uh, to be placed. So um, I know Christine was concerned about that with the generator, but there's, in that section as, it, as depicted here, there's more than enough space for a compost pile. Um, were there any other issues? I know, so there was the, the fire, uh, there was the door. Uh, I need to be in, I'm in touch with the town engineer regarding the uh, runoff plan. He said everything sounds fine because I'm using a 2100 gallon uh, cistern to recover the water from the two roofs of the buildings. Uh, so he said that from everything we discussed there should not be an issue. I called him today to invite him down to the site just to walk it over, just to make sure he's satisfied with all the various uh, precautions and apparatus I'm taking to keep the stormwater uh, runoff uh, at the proper levels. Um, Christine, and in the last, uh, in the last meeting, um, and Christine had made me aware that about the signage, so I am going to be putting signage in according to, I'm assuming, the CCC regulations and just general rules of making people aware of closed circuit television in use, even though this is a private street. Um, I will have the signage on the front stating no entry, uh, you know, all the various general private do not enter under threat of prosecution, et cetera. Um, the lighting, um, there was a lighting sheet passed out to you folks there. Um, the specifications uh, that were requested were 4,000 uh, Kelvin, or I think it was a Kelvin, right? So that is what I'm using, so I'm using 120, 208, and on that 150 watt, it'll show you there. 
that the level of the kelvins produced is 4,000, which is at the 150 watt lights, which I've already purchased, and using at 12208 uh, electricity, which is what I have at the facility. I think those are all the issues which were left open from the last meeting. Um, you did go to the um, uh, conservation. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. They gave me the permit, which I have right here. Yes, I have the permit. I was granted that today, which I have to go oh, record. Yes, okay. I have to go record at the uh, Registry of Deeds uh, tomorrow or what have you. Good to know. But they sent uh, Christine and Pam are aware of uh, the issuing of that permit. Okay. Um, so at this point, I'll open it up to questions from the board. If you have any questions, Jack. Uh, I was just wondering, with regard to the, your compost uh, pile, you you were reduced it by from two to one. I'm just wondering, uh, is that essential that you have that compost? Pile? No, not really. The people that I was going to work with, which turned out they had every intention on dealing to the black market, so I had to cut ties with them. Um, they were claim making claims that if you keep uh, reusing soil, which I've reused soil for decades. I've never had a problem. They were making claims that you can get fung uh, soil-borne fungus from dead roots in the soil. I have a soil machine, big, massive soil machine, which I'm going to churn the soil. Um, you know, if you add, like, uh, worm castings or bat guano or various other organic, because it's organic growth, you mix it in. Um, I'm going to be taking the used soil, rejuvenating it with whatever organic byproducts. Um, I'm considering it taking out. I might not even use a compost pile. I'm, they have it there just in case. Um, there may be certain byproducts that I will not sell or use, which I will, under CCC rules, have to compost into the earth with a machine, et cetera, what have you. Um, so for that, I'll need the compost pile. But most of the soil, which is, um, which is, there's two components to the soil. There's the organic coast of Maine from Maine, which is a very good, rich soil. And then there's a promix. A promix is generally sphagnum peat, vermiculite, and perlite, and it's a general standard made by many companies. Um, so I'm going to be mixing the two because the promix is airy, because you need the aeration in the soil, the roots. So um, the soil itself really gets eaten up by the plants, and what you're left with is the promix, um, which is inert. Um, so in mulling it over with the issue of cost, because the soil is very expensive, and the issue of composting, um, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm just going to reuse the soil and anything that I have material that the CCC is requiring that be destroyed, uh, roots, various leaves, et cetera, I'm going to be taking that out of the complex pile. Okay. Any other questions? Um, I, have, I have a question for you. And that, the signs that he's talking about, would we have to see those, like, you know, security, or do we only see signs that other businesses. You could make a blanket statement that you would approve <coughs> anything that has to do with security, any signage that has to do with security. But if Mr. Griffin wants to put up some signs that aren't required by the CCC or the town for some reason, okay. then he would need to come back to you to have the signs approved. Would that be agreeable to you? Yeah, sure. I'm not planning on putting anything up there except for they're just small. It's shaped like a stop sign. It was actually up there when you folks were there. It's just... Mm maybe 10 inches by 10 inches uh, octagon, I believe it is. It says, you know, private no trespassing, et cetera, et cetera, things like that nature. The, I don't know if it has cameras on there. I don't think it has cameras on there. But I'm assuming the CCC is going to want me to have something that says, you know, cameras in use. Video, that, right. Uh, OK. Chris. So I understand the material that's on this um, thumb drive here uh, involves um, some of these standard operating procedures <coughs> and the management of the site. So do you want Mr. Griffin to spend some time talking to you about that? Because you'll be getting the documents, but in case you have some questions, this would be an opportunity to ask him questions about that. And again, I regret that I didn't. Um, we don't have them, but we could put them up on the screen. And I guess I could put them on the screen, but I think they're a long read. Yeah, I think so you don't want to go could over. summarize. Oh, I didn't know if he could yeah, summarize what, over. yeah. No, it's going to take right. too long. So I will send them to you, and you can ask him questions next time, OK? Sounds good. Uh, just 
did I see a uh, correspondence between the, uh, you, Chris, you, um, did the town engineer give a final email or we're still waiting on that? We're waiting for the town engineer, yes. The only, the only okay. thing is the uh, stormwater runoff. Yeah. And I was only made aware of that recently and I've been in touch with him and I spoke to them on the phone, I told them he's familiar with the plan. He said, yeah, that sounds great. It shouldn't be a problem, just give me the calculation. That's all. And then he'll send us an email. So yeah, hopefully so really, we can have that for the next really time. It's really just a matter of just some procedure right now just to get him some numbers. But he said it should be great. With the rain recovery. On the good. It's good it's on the works. Um, oh, I, I saw David. David. Yeah, just want, it looks like we were given deeds to the property that you're building or that you, ha that you have and then an adjacent property, perhaps another deed. Why? Ms. McGowan asked questions about where the easement was located, uh, and so I wanted to provide you as much information as I could find about where that easement was located. It's very vague in the deeds. It states that there is an easement, but I couldn't find any plan that er illustrates the easement, and you had asked for Mr. Gerfine to come back with a map showing the easement, but I don't think there is such a map. Right. But That's what I had mentioned at the beginning yeah. of the meeting, that a technical, a legal easement, in my familiarity with legal uh, jargon, an easement is not, doesn't define a specific location. An easement is a right to pass over someone's property, to get to their property. The easement is determined upon, uh, you know, agreement of, you know, negotiation and feasibility of, you know, where the crossing should be. So the, the, this particular, where these parking, the visitor parking is, this was, as you can see where it says Porter Drive, this portion of road was not constructed. This was a plan which I'm assuming the town rejected a long time ago, more than 20 or 30 years or something to that effect, uh, because this property is obviously all, it's been here for 20 or 30 years with the restaurant and what have you, a radio station. So the easement was placed here, but never used or exercised. So I'm assuming that now that there's wetlands, it's a moot issue. And if he wanted an easement, um, you know, uh, this is Hall Drive. He can actually reach his, at the top of the right screen, Hall Drive here, which is our understanding from the town uh, municipality, uh, the DPW, they told me this is his private road. And his property is back here. So in all actuality, he can actually access his property from here. Um, so, you know, the, the issue of an easement, that was for a future larger development if he was granted permission to build houses, a build, you know, a massive building complex, housing complex, which I'm assuming the town rejected because it was never done. Um, yeah. If that's the easement, there's nothing that would impede that well, use of it. Just, just no. the corner, maybe the corner of the fence. But that he could just no, it wouldn't impede it at all. Okay, no, so you, not at all. So he could drive through the parking spaces and whatever. Right, he could drive right into the wetlands. I mean, yeah. No, 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 we don't like that. No, okay, I mean, so, so but oh, yeah. there's no there's no structure in no, front of it. No, absolutely okay. not. No, the the electric company has a. If you look where my cursor is, the electric company has a doghouse right here. But still, that's not in the way. I mean, you could still put a whole road there, a two-lane road, and drive right in there. Um, that's off to the side. But no, there's no structures there. I'm not going to be putting any structures there or anything. Um, but like I said, you know, this is already, I'm assuming this plan, from my knowledge, when I went to UMass, when that was Seasons Restaurant, and now for 20 years almost, the winery, and there was a radio station there, you know, his, his that easement and that whole plan is, more than 20 years old. Good. Chris? I just had one more thing to say. Um, I had a conversation with Erin Jacques, who is now the wetlands administrator, and she told me um, with regard to the trees that were cut, um, I had put a note in a previous mailing to you that I thought it was unsightly and that something should be done to either clean it up or screen it or something like that. She said that the Conservation Commission does not want those trees to be cleaned up. She wants, they want them to stay there because they're afraid of disturbing the wetland further if those trees are removed. So her, um, the Conservation Commission is saying leave the trees there. Things will grow up through them, around them. In the spring it won't be so unsightly and the suggestion or the 
the requirement of the CONCOM is just to leave them alone. So I wanted to make sure you knew that. And Chris, just so you know, um, I spoke with Aaron today. Some of the trees that are sticking out toward the end, those will be cleaned to the edge of the driveway, which Aaron told me is what is wanted and required. And um, just to block off the wetlands in the future, the commission has required or requested that I put large boulders at right over the edge. Once everything is done and the straw bales are removed, and that large boulders are put there just so for whenever the next, you know, till eternity, the, uh, the wetlands are not disturbed. So that's the plan, to put large, unmovable boulders there um, on the earth after the edge of the pavement, which she gave me permission to clean to the edge of and then a few inches past that to put up the fencing. Uh, Chris? I'm sorry I'm taking up so much time, but I just wanted to say one more thing, that um, the zoning bylaw actually requires that um, applicants for marijuana establishments submit documentation to whichever board they're going to, stating that they have submitted their application for a license to do what they're doing. So Mr. Gerfine is in the process of submitting his application to the state. Um, once he has submitted that, he'll get some document back from them saying, acknowledging that, that they've received it. So um, he's going to produce that for you when he receives it, but that would be an important thing to have before you grant him whatever approval you're considering granting him. And him actually have the license or just be in the process of it? He doesn't need the license. He just needs to prove to you that he's in the process. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Maria, did I see your hand? Okay. <laughs> um, any other questions from the board? I don't see any, so um, we'll continue this hearing. Uh, are we looking at December 4th? Is, are you available for that, December yep. 4th? Yep. Did you want to take any public comment in case there's oh, public thank comment? thank you. Yes. Um, is there anyone here who would like to speak on this? No. I thought I recognized most of the faces. <laughs> um, so we're going to continue this to December 4th. If I can hear a motion, is that what we, yeah. Motion to continue to, oh, sorry. <laughs> motion to continue this site plan review public hearing to December, December 4th. 4th. Do we have to say a time or do you? You could say 7.15. Um, you have another case that's coming on at 7.05, but it's a pretty small case, so okay. I think 7.15. Is Bank of America coming that night? They are, but I don't think we've assigned them a time. So we'll put them after. But th this at 7 p.m. Yeah. Okay. Um, did I hear a second on that? Second. Second. Uh, any discussion, comments? December 4th, okay. We'll vote all in favor. Unanimous. Thank you, and Thank we'll you. see you on the 4th. Okay. Uh, so we'll move to the 7.15. It's actually... 733 to SPR 2019-08, Javier Campos at Adams Ruxton for Bank of America, 360 College Street, being continued from July 24th, um, 2019, September 18th, 2019, and November 6th, 2019. Uh, Request to site plan review approval to install new light posts and fixtures to provide better illumination, safety, and security for Bank of America ATM, commercial zoning district, map 15A, parcel 28. The public hearing is now open and at the applicant's request, it is to be continued to December 4th, 2019. Do I hear a motion to continue to December 4th, 2019? And I have 715 here, but we're gonna slide that to seven. 
it's not even real. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's so moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? All right, that gets moved. All right, so that's 730. Okay. Okay, so we'll move now to um, item four, public meeting subdivision, Amherst Hill subdivision sub 1989-13. Continue discussion on request by residents of Amherst Hill subdivision that the planning board rescind the release of lots that were released by the planning board on May 1st, 2019 from the approval with covenant contracted dated July 2nd, 2003, recorded in the Hampshire County Registry of Deeds books 7555, page 61. Um, welcome back. Um, I haven't heard whether, is there one of you that would like to make a statement or an update or are you just here to hear us <coughs> Um, look at the information we've received so far. An opportunity to speak. <laughs> I'll take Save it. me from right? speaking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, Ms. Brestrup, uh, Pam. <laughs> I'm Tom Reedy, an attorney with Bacon Wilson here in Amherst, uh, here on behalf of various homeowners in Amherst Hills subdivision. Um, we were here uh, a month ago, I think uh, end of October, and we had a discussion that evening, and ultimately the board voted to issue a notice um, requesting that the building commissioner does not issue any of the building permits. The DPW does not issue any sewer or water connection permits until certain things happened. I think what you'll hear tonight is there were some numbers thrown around last time. Um, I think uh, the developer had said fifty to one hundred thousand dollars. I think you'll see that the top coat, if it's two hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars, the balance of the work to bring that subdivision road up is six hundred and forty-one thousand dollars, for a total of nine hundred and thirty thousand dollars. And so our request would be that you modify, you know, as you can under both the law and under your previous agreement with the the, the, the developer, uh, you increase the security to that nine hundred and thirty thousand dollars and then you either continue this moratorium on the building permits or you vote to rescind uh, the release of those lots that we had mentioned before. We'll be here to listen, to speak, or turn it over and let Mr. Skeel speak. Thank you. Um, is the town engineer on the house? There you are. Would you like to come up and explain what you, the cost estimate? Jason Skeels, town engineer. Um, so yeah, I did, I did the cost estimate based on um, mass DOT itemized costs for statewide average. From they, every bid they open, they, they throw it into the average and it's a, a running annual uh, average for the different itemized costs. Well, the best I could, I took bits and pieces out of that and went through the subdivision to see what would need to be done to bring it up to par and came up with the estimate. Is there any, does anybody have any specific questions about the estimate or? Does the board have any questions? Chris? Um, I have a question which is that um, Mr. Skeels um, tell us how much it would cost to um, mill the areas that are not uh, satisfactory and repave them. And I think he and I had a conversation about this a few weeks ago when we came up with the number um, one of the items says, uh, so item 129 is pavement milling, and that is just under $60,000. And then the item number 450.31 is the intermediate pavement course, and that's 145000 a little more. So may I just have one more thing? Um, so the two of those are together amount to about a little over 200,000 to um, repair the pieces of the road that are, have deteriorated over the years. Just wanted to make that statement. 
also the other parts of it are things that the town wants done so that they can it would be down the road except the road yeah so the there's the top coat um, there's adjusting all the structures to the finished grade of the top coat um, there's a lot of deferred maintenance on there's no dogs allowed in here I'm sorry <laughs> There's uh, the detention ponds haven't been maintained since, probably since initial construction. You're gonna have to leave with that dog. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> so um, there's a lot of deferred maintenance. Like the there's some uh, there's the failing pavement that's that needs to be redone. There's some failing uh, catch basins, uh, some frames and covers that need to be replaced because they've been damaged. Um, there's the detention ponds haven't been maintained um, more or less I think since the original construction so they're completely overgrown um, there's several stormwater treatment chambers that have never been cleaned out um, there's a lot to do with the sort of uh, stormwater operation and maintenance plan that that has fallen way behind so a lot of that's sort of included in this estimate Janet I have a question about the stormwater management system. Does it does the system, when it's functioning, serve to protect the road, the drinking water supply below, and the neighbors down slope on Station Road? Um, a little bit of all of the above, yes. Um, and it's still marginally functional. It's, it, yeah, it's just probably underperforming at this point. The ponds, the detention ponds, do do their do do their job relatively well whether they're overgrown or not they're just harder to inspect and harder to maintain so what made this three times more money wise than what we saw a couple of years ago so and what we saw again in may when so a lot of this was my, there was there was an original estimate that we showed ted um, the Tofino, and there were some items that he promised to check off the list. Um, some of those got done, others didn't. My original estimate from, it's actually in 2013, I know the three-party agreement didn't come for a few years, but in 2013, my original estimate was 600,000. Um, in the meantime, between then and the third-party agreement, he took care of certain things, like he did pave all the sidewalks. That was included in that estimate. He paved the sidewalks and I think he put the binder down to make the continuous loop of Concord and Linden Ridge. And he also decided to take off the cul-de-sac of Linden Ridge Road, which extends out for another total of another seven lots. Um, so he said, we don't need that. We don't need a security deposit on it. So he sort of took that off and we agreed to it. Um, so, and we also, he also, assured us that he would take care of all the other little things on the list and some got taken care of others didn't so we're sort of back circling back around on some of the things that didn't get done some did get done and then other parts of the road have just degraded so so much more rapidly than we would have expected that that we're back to you know having to remove so a lot of what has already gone down and that's that's probably the lion's share of this cost is the is the about 200,000 in mill and and repave so the last estimate you had done was 600. Right. But a lot of things did get done, so you thought Some the things. 288 was we, good enough? He was doing good on all, he was checking things off the list, so, and we were in good faith, said, okay, we can just do it for the top course as long as all these other things are getting done, and they were. Um, then we said, okay, that's, we'll go with just the top course, and, and the road will be finished. Um. So I assume the previous estimates you did of the 600 or the 288, you used mass DOT standards same, like those. Yeah, the same, same numbers. Which in general, I would say probably it runs the number high because yes, we're lower out statewide, here than yeah, statewide. statewide. Average. Yeah. Um, but usually you use a, like a contingency, like you mark it up a certain amount. To, so yeah. I don't see that here. So, um, for this estimate, for the current estimate, or the? The current, the, the current. 930. So 
that does have the the, the as-built plans at 10% is a little high, so I kind of that should be as-built and contingencies, I guess. Then that would clear that up. Yes. Okay. So that that adds another what is it, 84, 85,000? Thought those were pretty expensive as-builts. It would be. Yes, I should have put contingencies. That, no, now I know. Okay. Um, anyone else have questions, Chris? I just wanted to note that if Tofino did this work themselves, they wouldn't be paying this amount of money right. because this is the amount that um, state and, and federal, or excuse me, municipal entities have to pay. They have to meet the, um, the required wage, wage rates, but a uh, private entity doesn't need to do that. Um, could you give us an update? The last time we spoke, he had done a lot of work, but we were mostly waiting for the storm drains. There were some things on right. order. Has that been done, or when is it expected so to be done? I didn't make it out there today, and I don't think any. Yeah, I don't think anything would have happened tonight, anyways. Um, I'm seeing no heads so, shaking. So he did patch the potholes, and he did. Um, they they put placed mastic around the manholes that were oh, protruding they did do that, that. Would, okay. that would catch our plows. Mm -hmm. um, so they did all that. Um, they're still waiting on the two. They had to reorder some precast concrete tops um, to replace the ones that were failing. So they're waiting on those. I think they sh I heard that they would be in this week and that they would try to get that done this week. I'm not, I can't speak for exactly when, but that's what I was told. Okay. So if they were done, mm -hmm. would the town be able to safely plow the roads again this winter? Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, Jack? So um, seeing that these incorporate prevailing wage, mm -hmm. what's your guesstimate if it was not a? It's really hard to say. I'd rather have a, I'd rather get a paving company in there and have them give me a real estimate, honestly. This, you know, this, I would rather contact vendors directly and say how much to fix this, how much to do that and get a real estimate from, from a local contractor or three. Um, so Chris, there hasn't, you haven't heard anything from the developer's lawyer um, about getting a third party estimate. So I put out a, an email to the developer and um, asked if they would be um, getting their own uh, third party estimate. And I also asked if they would be willing to sign a, a new um, performance agreement. Um, I didn't hear back from the developer, but through our attorney, um, Joel Bard at Copelman and Page, I have heard from Michael Pill, who is representing the developer. And um, I haven't heard from Michael Pill about an answer to either of those questions. What I did learn from, um, from Copelman and Page, from Joel Bard, is that the, um, the town, uh, it's really up to the developer as to what form of assurance he is going to give to the town. Um, he did have a covenant. The covenant has kind of um, gone by the wayside now that you've released all the lots. Um, but you still have, um, you, you asked the, the building commissioner not to issue building permits on those lots. And we feel that it would be a bad faith um, uh, action. By the, um, by the developer if he were to go ahead and sell those lots given the fact that you've asked the building commissioner not to grant building permits for those lots. And you've also asked the Department of Public Works not to grant sewer and water connections for those lots. That uh, letter with your request has been filed at the registry. So um, you know people who would be purchasing those lots are on notice that this restriction is in place. You didn't put any uh, deadline or expir expiration date on that restriction, so that's that's still in place. The building commissioner has told me that he's willing to accept your request and, and abide by your request. So, um, so I spoke. So, shall I stop Keep going. there? No. <laughs> <laughs> so um, last night I had a very good conversation with uh, Joel Bard at Copelman and Page. And he recommended, um, well, everyone knows that there's been a lawsuit um, that the developer has uh, filed a complaint against the residents. Um, and what he's asking for is um, mediation or arbitration. Um, so it's really just 
in my mind right now, it's not a lawsuit where he's asking for damages or anything like that. Um, so potentially there is going to be some conversation between the developer and the residents. We do not get into that at all. That's not um, the planning board's jurisdiction. But given the fact that there, there is this lawsuit and given the fact that you did um, make the request to the building commissioner not to issue building permits, um, our town council town attorney feels that it is um, appropriate for you to just keep those things in place and not to um, further take action such as um, rescind the release of the lots at this time. You may wish to revisit this, you know, in a month from now, two months from now, whatever, but at this time the town attorney's recommendation to you is not to take further action, see what happens with the lawsuit, see what happens with Tofino repairing the road, and um, revisit it later on. Thank you. Um, what is the course of action with the town if we were to request um, officially a, the performance bond being up? I know you said you sent an email asking, but what recourse or how does that? We don't really have recourse. We can't really That's force the developer to sign another agreement, but okay. you do have those um, restrictions placed on the lots. So that in, in Joel Bard's uh, opinion, that's pretty significant, and, and that's what you should stick with for now and not, not get into um, rescinding the release of the lots. Quite frankly, um, Mr. Bard told me that um, if the planning board were to step in and rescind the release of the lots now, given the fact that there is a lawsuit out there, the planning board could be drawn into the lawsuit, and that's probably not some, you know, a direction that you want to go in. Um, so anyway, I think this is a good recommendation uh, by Attorney Bard, and um, but of course it's up to the planning board as to you know what direction you want to take. Okay, and if we could just have an update before our next planning board meeting on whether or not that work gets done, and if the DPW is back on for plowing the neighborhood, that would be helpful. Yeah. Any other questions from the board? Um, I'm going to open it up to the public, but you're on call. Should I stay or should I come back um, if needed? I was going to say maybe you should uh, stay. It just Well, if you don't mind, I mean, you're way back. You but <laughs> um, Could I see a show of hands of people who wish to speak this evening on this issue? And raise them high in the... One, two, three, four. I see four hands. Um, I'll ask again after we get through the four. I'm going to go first with Mr. Master Alexis, and then the gentleman, or whatever the hand was in the back, and, and then three and four. You're on. Make sure the green light is on and introduce yourself. All right. Uh, good evening, uh, Madam Chairwoman and members of the committee. Uh, my name is James Master Alexis. I live at 35 Linden Ridge Road in Amherst. Um, I am okay with you continuing, I'll just call it the moratorium on, on building permits and sewer connections. I mean, I came here, we came here to get the lots rescinded, which I don't want to repeat my, our arguments, but we said that work needed to be done that wasn't done. But I understand, okay, and we want to be reasonable, all right? Um, the one thing I'd want you to consider is this. Okay, now Jason just got up here, the town engineer got up here and said that he originally in years ago estimated that the work to be done on the, on the subdivision was 600,000, okay? And then there was a compromise, which I'm fine with compromise, okay, to $288,000 for only the top coat of the road, okay? So where we sit here today is we have a subdivision that and I know that the figure needs to go down because of the various prevailing wages. I understand that, but I'll just use the 930 for a discussion. We have a, with the understanding that's gonna be lower, we have a subdivision that requires $930,000 worth of work. Various things that are on, I think, a four page punch list, okay? And the only security that we have is for the top layer of the road, okay? Now I've read as you know, we've all read a lot of things in this case, and I, I read a, a very instructive memo from Ms. Brester 
um, I think it was dated March 17, 2017, where she said, um, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Ms. Bressrup, that once a subdivision is over 50% complete, that the town requires either a check from the developer or some type of security for the project, okay? Here, in the covenants, the only security was the work on the ground has to be completed. Then you went to the three-party agreement for the 288. My point is, is that we have approximately, uh, you know, south of $930,000 worth of work and we're only guaranteeing the top coat of the road. What if that work doesn't get done? You know, we're, we're, we're going to be, everyone's going to be stuck on that. So I would ask you to please increase, you know, keep the moratorium on the building permits and the sewer hookups. I think that's a good compromise and I understand that. Okay, but you need to please increase the security on this project because I think given the recent history of what's gone on there, there's been such a lack of work that's happened in the last couple of years. I think that's instructive of the a developers either willing, lack of willingness or lack of financial ability to pay for the work here. I don't know what it is, but I would just ask you to quickly you know, as quick as you want to go, okay, increase the security on this project, okay? So that's my comment. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. There was a hand in the back there. Hi. Uh, Hi. My name is Brian Scully. Oh, what, sit down and... and the, oh. Catch it in the mic, Zero your name head. and address. Uh, right. Brian Scully, 22 Hawthorne Road in Amherst. Can you please speak uh, up? Yeah, sure. Yeah, or pull the mic a little closer. Okay. Is that okay? Yes. <laughs> Much better, uh, thank thanks. you. Thanks. I don't know, when you look out here and you see all of us, I mean, the, the people from Amherst Hills, it may look like we're angry, and we're not. We're worried. We're really worried. And I think tonight you got a peek into what the communication is like between us and Tofino. Um, I would think that a letter from the planning board, or you know, I'm not exactly sure what your job is, ma'am, but I would think that would be taken seriously, you know, and at least being given the courtesy of a reply. They're not even replying to you. And you have the power of rescinding the lots. I think Jim's right. I think you're, you've, you've got a good compromise here. It's fair. And that's all we want is, is to be treated fairly. We don't begrudge them making a lot of money on the development. I love my house, and I bet everybody here does. It's a nice neighborhood. There's good people. It's safe. Um, we just want them to finish what they said they would do exactly in the way they said they would do it. And this thing about going to arbitration, I think that's, I think that's, that's getting us, trying to get us to negotiate against ourselves. We already had a negotiation when we bought our homes that they would finish the roads in a manner that you, the town, would say, okay, they're, they're in good shape, we'll, we'll take them over. And we all bought our houses with that understanding. And so now they're asking us to, move into arbitration, I guess, as a sidestep from court, but that's what we're doing, is we're, by just doing that, we're going into a situation where we're giving something up right out of the gate, meaning we're not holding you to your full, your full deal. We're, okay, let's, what, what do you want? 75%, 50, what, what is it? And that's just not the right way to do it. When we bought our houses, we made deals to pay them, we paid them, just like we pay our taxes and everything else. There's just a certain decency in how you treat people. And the fact that I am shocked when, you know, when I get my bill for water, I write the check the same day and it's in the mailbox. I mean, that's how I respond to stuff that comes from the town or, or from anybody. It's just a common courtesy. They're not given that. And I think we're all afraid they might go bankrupt or pull one of those bankruptcies to try to remove them from the, the, the thing. And maybe they'll just say, well, let's eat the 10 lots. What the hell, you know? Um, I don't know what they're going to do. And when you don't get any communication, I don't think you can even really guess. But we're, we're worried. 
We're not angry, we're worried. And we're not trying to take money away from them. Hell, if they can get this done for 600 grand or something, great. It's, we're not trying to punish anybody. We just want what we came into the agreements with. We want to get what we had, just like we did when we bought our houses. None of us tried to back out and shorten the money. None of us have, have, have done anything like that. We've just tried to, to live up to the deal. And that's what we want. But I think it's scary as hell that they're, they're just ignoring what you, what you asked them questions and gave them, I would imagine, a few weeks to answer. I just I find that troubling. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Joan Huntley, H-U-N-T-L-E-Y, 16 Hawthorne Road. I just wanted to hear another issue that's come up because of this is my husband and I have had our house on the market and we're not going to be able to sell it now. Not with this over our head. I don't know if increasing the security would help somebody coming into the situation look at our house, but I just wanted you to understand that that's another problem. Alexandra Mayu, 73 Linden Ridge Road. Um, first of all, thank you all so much for listening to this matter over and over, um, uh, over several weeks. Um, so I would like to say something with respect to um, good faith. Um, I, I am a computer science professor here at UMass. I, I have nothing to do with construction. When I bought my house, I didn't expect that I would be on the hook for building the roads. Um, me and my neighbors are regular people. Um, and I understand we all live in a small town and, and we operate in good faith because, uh, you know, we're, we're, I don't know, I don't want to say friends, but like we, I don't know, one person in this room delivered my child and, and I'm sure I've had, um, <laughs> I've had a lot of, you know, maybe your kids in my classroom. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it, it makes sense that we operate in good faith. but. Um, when the time comes when we see evidence of bad acting here, um, uh, it, it should make us take an extra step to, to protect those who need it. And, and we're not asking for favors here. We're asking you to exercise the mandate that the planning board has, which is supervise construction and subdivisions. Um, we think I share, same as our neighbors, the concerns that um, we don't know exactly what is going on with Tofino. Um, uh, there's a lot of talk going around about you know, financial trouble. Maybe they will go bankrupt. I know one of my uh, friends in the last couple of years has tried to contact them to, to build a house. They never got back to him. Something is up. I don't know what it is. They're not showing up to these meetings. We all are. And we are concerned that you know, they're just trying to make as much money as they can from the lots they have and just bail out. So increasing these securities is really important to make sure that we're all protected and, and we're not left hanging and having to build the road ourselves. We're, we're just regular people here and we're asking you to do the job that the planning board is supposed to be doing in these cases. Thank you. Thank you. Chris. I just wanted to say that I don't think the planning board can unilaterally increase the security. It was a three-party agreement that was signed by the developer, the bank, and the planning board. So without the other two legs to the stool, I don't think that um, we can make this work. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak? Uh, hi, I'm John Kennedy. I'm at 36 Linden Ridge Road. I just wanted to observe that what's happening here with Tofino and coal construction is not isolated to our neighborhood. There's a pattern here. Uh, we have friends on Kestrel and Hopbrook, and they're experiencing exactly the same situation, where the base coat was put down in their neighborhood, the road begins to deteriorate, and they've been working for years to try to convince Tofino to act to fulfill their obligation and they've been unsuccessful. The only difference is that they haven't organized the way that we have. 
but I've spoken to the um, president of their neighborhood association, and they're deeply concerned watching what's going on here, but you have a whole other neighborhood in Amherst that was built by the same developer that's going through exactly the same thing, the same pattern of Tofino, Cole, not living up to the, 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 the obligations, their contractual obligations to complete the road. So we're not, again, they never completed the road. When we bought our houses, we did not buy our house expecting that we would be responsible for constructing the roads. We bought our houses knowing that the roads would, would be completed, and in the event that when the roads were completed, the town did not accept the roads, that we would be responsible for maintenance. Not that we would be responsible for completing the uncompleted roads. And the reason the roads, you know, in my theory, of course, is is that they're deteriorating is because they were never completed. The top coat was never put on. So that's probably why the estimate continues to go up. There's a base coat down, no top coat, no sealant. So the roads are naturally deteriorating at a rapid rate. And if we wait on this, that $900,000 is probably going to go up even farther. So again, um, we respect the role that you play to look out for the town's interests. We are the town, we are the citizens of the town, the taxpayers of this town, and we expect you to look up for our interest as well, and we appreciate anything you can do to help us. Thanks. Thank you. I see one more hand. Is there anyone else who would like to speak after this? And one more, okay. Welcome. Thank you. Hi, Lake Spirko, 53 Concord Way. Just like to reiterate some of that same thing that Tufino, Ted Parker knew that this was only a base coat and would deteriorate, we would determined after so many years, and we well extended that. And the uh, town engineer even said that at our last meeting that he informed Parker that it would deteriorate. Now it's deteriorating. The price tag is going way up. He knew that. I guess he's thinking under his way that they're reading this contract, which we read totally different, is there's no incentive for him to fix the road because he's gonna put the bill on us because he's calling that maintenance. Although I will reiterate, Ted Parker and uh, Cole told us personally that they would fix the, get the road to a condition that the town would take it over. And they had all thoughts that the, they would get it to a um, condition that the town would take it over and they've done so in the past. So that was all verbal, but they have made a agreement to all of us and now they've seemed to go back on their word. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Reedy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just one last point, maybe to Ms. Brestrup's latest point about uh, the unilateral authority of the planning board to increase a security um, or performance agreement. And I think that a couple of things. Planning Board's authority comes from the statute, 4181U. Um, I'll read in a minute uh, an excerpt from Joel Bard's email that was sent to the town, I think, last month, which cites a case that supports that point. But the Planning Board's authority also comes from the approval. So when you originally, not this specific board, but the Planning Board approved this definitive subdivision some odd years ago, you know, 1989. Um, there were certain performance requirements and there were expectations. There, there was a, a plan, a definitive plan that was endorsed by the board that had certain criteria that required the developer to meet. So that's kind of the basis for this. So that approval was given because everybody thought that these roads were going to be constructed in accordance with those plans up to those standards. And so while well, you've got this three-party agreement, which by its terms specifically says uh, in accordance with the decision, if the obligations are not completed by June 30th, 2019, the planning board may require the applicant to provide additional security as necessary to maintain such direct and reasonable relationship, which security shall be a condition for obtaining further lot releases and or permit issuances. And so while you may not be able to go to them and say you have to, I think you've got a pretty strong argument here that you may because they had agreed to it back uh, in 2017. Um, I think by rescinding the lots, you gain a little bit more leverage than to go back and to maybe exercise under the terms of that agreement, that three-party agreement. But even absent that three-party agreement, you can seek uh, a separate security. And it's the, I think it's 
It's a case out of Milbury, Zoning Board of Appeals of Milbury versus, I think, Foxgate LLC, and Joel quotes it, uh, cites it in his email, and it says, uh, the court ultimately concluded, and this is from Joel's email, the court ultimately concluded that the planning board in that case, meaning that uh, Foxgate case, properly could revisit, quote, properly could revisit the section 81U security requirement, unquote, despite the lots being released from the covenant because a planning board's authority to ensure that sufficient security is in place for the construction of ways and services is an important function of the statute. And then later on he says, the power to revisit or modify the covenant or security for completion of ways and services did not terminate when the lots were released. And so when we're talking about what can the planning board do, to me that seems pretty clear that the planning board can, and in fact should in this instance, ask for or request additional security, whether it's in the form of a three-party agreement or not. And I think that rescinding approval and understanding that you have got some advice from town council and you're not necessarily gonna step into litigation if you don't have to, though the town may be impleted anyway because it may play a crucial role here. Um, we would suggest that if you can rescind the release of those lots, then you gain some leverage back to put some pressure, and if it's 930000 or $800,000, something, to really satisfy the neighbors to know that. Because if there's that security is in place, and if the developer walks away, then at least we know that those roads are going to be completed, and it's not going to be on the homeowners or on the town. Because it's likely that the town may get involved if there needs to be some completion, and it's not on the homeowner's back. So understanding what council has said to you, I would suggest maybe some further discussions with him if you're not ready to act tonight and maybe you take it up at your next meeting but it seems to me like you have the unilateral authority to ask for additional or separate security to bring it up to that amount uh, that you need thank you chris could um i request that you go back to mr bard and asked about um deeper clarification on the millbury versus foxgate and the um line about the uh, June 30th, 2019 deadline, and if that had has any bite to it. Can, does the board have any other, other uh, besides Janet, anyone else have? Okay, so Janet. So I, I would add to that the, the paragraph that says, um, the amount of the security shall at all times bear a direct and reasonable relationship to the expected cost to complete such work including but not limited to the effects of inflation, delays in construction, and damage to previously completed work. In accordance with the decision, if the obligations are not completed by June 30th, 2019, the planning board may require the applicant to provide additional security as necessary to maintain direct, such direct and reasonable relationship, which security shall be a condition for obtaining further lot releases and or permit, it, permit issuances. So, this, it seems to me that the agreement gives the planning board the ability just to increase the security or the, the performance guarantee amount, which I think would force Tofino to get that. And the contract was written by Tofino, so it should be like construed against them since they wrote the language. It's, when you interpret it, you kind of think, okay. So can, can Joel, can Bard look at that and say, can we just under this contract just enforce that term? and increase the guarantee, performance guarantee. Any other questions? Oh, Michael. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure whether this is a question or simply a comment, but um, I had an opportunity. And I looked to find them and found the uh, subdivision regulations. Uh, the last amended in uh, June of uh, 2014. Um, and there are several points in it which are both illuminating and confusing. Um, I'm looking at uh, section six, required improvements, um, and the subsection is basic requirements. And um, it says the subdivider shall provide all of the improvements required herein and installed at his own expense. All work done under the section shall be done under the direction of the board, the town manager, and the town engineer. 
uh, and no aforementioned bond or covenant shall be released until all streets have been in place over at least one winter. Now, the two questions I have is, uh, one, why over one winter, and what does the streets mean in this, in this connection? Does it mean the streets fully, fully finished and accepted by the town or built to town standards? Or um, what exactly does that section mean? Immediately following that, it says, in addition to the town of Amherst construction standards, those are capitalized, town Amherst construction standards, the following minimum specifications shall govern all the installation of all roadways, utilities, and other improvements. Um, and then it goes on with drainage and sanitary sewers and clearing and grubbing the rights away and, uh, and, and so on. But uh, my question is, is there such a thing documented and written down as town of Amherst construction standards for roadways? And that's a question I think Mr. Skeels can answer directly, easily. Yes, there are Town of Amherst construction standards. They're currently dated 1975, I believe. Hmm. We are oh, that's working helpful. on updating them. Um, most of the things apply here. Some materials need updating. Um, we made an attempt several years ago um, and have been sort of pushing it along every winter since. Um, so we are in the process of updating them. We have more updated policies and nothing. We have not gotten the full blessing of the, of the town of Amherst construction standards yet, but we have updated lots of policies and lots of material standards and lots of construction standards, but not officially in that document as of 1975. No, it might be 80. Okay, thank you. While you're still here, um, would you interpret the, the phrase uh, shall be released until all streets have been in place as meaning, as meaning the streets are completed to town standards? I would interpret it as completed. And I think your question about the one winter, that's like sort of a, a one year guarantee kind of thing. The winter usually plays out any wrongdoing that went, went on during construction. So it's sort of like a, you know, a, a loose one year guarantee, I would, as a get, I'm just sort of taking a stab at that. Do you have more? Yeah, one more. Uh, and this, this comes from section, seven, section 8, administration. It has to do with the uh, uh, administering the regulations, the sub subdivision regulations. Uh, under inspection, uh, number C, number 4, uh, it says the developer has the responsibility to ensure that the approved construction plans are implemented. Um, now, that seems to me to be a very specific statement completion of these roadways is the responsibility of the, um, of the developer and that until they are built to town standards, they are the responsibility of the developer. And uh, I think we need to somehow assert that uh, and uh, perhaps point out to uh, Mr. Parker and to Fino Associates that, uh, that planning board, at least, uh, finds them responsible for completing this work. When you were creating your uh, cost estimate, mm -hmm. is there, are there standards or is there a checklist that you go through that you're thinking that's for accepting roads? And when was the last time Amherst accepted a new road? Um, boy, when was our last street acceptance? I'm trying to think. Um, might have been another Tofino development. It was um, off of Snell Street, um, blanking on the road name. It's a short development right next to the bike path. How many years ago? Uh, like, God. When they ran out of the Christmas trees that they used to sell there. That's yeah. Moody Field. <laughs> Probably 2013 or 2015. OK. So is there? Do you have standards or a checklist um, this, for road acceptance? Uh, the, the like, standards what are you are using the, to do the, the cost? The, the, yeah. the, prelimin the subdivision plans are what we use. They have the details on how thick the pavement's supposed to be, what the different uh, catch basins and sewer manholes are supposed to look like. Um, there's 
there's certain testing that we perform on the water, sewer, and drains um, that that allow you know that they have to pass before we'll accept the utilities. Um, but for the most part, it's the definitive subdivision plan. Everything is pretty much spelled out on those plans. And the we, original? Yeah, the original subdivision plans. So how does that work for a division like subdivision like this that's, you know, we could say 30 years, we'll say for mm -hmm. most of it, 20 years, but that's things right. like stormwater runoff have changed a lot, you know. Yeah. How does that get one, implemented in the cost and the performance bond? So this one got sort of retrofitted with newer stormwater standards. Granted, it was permitted in 89, but when they came back, they had to meet the new stormwater standards. Right. They, so there's detention ponds, money. there's stormwater treatment chambers, and those are all in place. They just need maintenance is all. So those are in there, and they meet the requirements once they've been cleaned and maintained, and they're back in working order or full working order, I guess I should say. So, so the definitive, these definitive subdivision plans, they have all that included. They've got the pavement thicknesses, the type of curbing, and it's all, you, if you, just from reading the plans, you sort of figure out what's, what's missing and what's there and what needs to be done and, and what hasn't been done. Any other questions from the board? I don't see any. Thank you. So, Chris, you'll follow up with um, town council and find out what we can and can't do regarding that performance bond. Um, should we put a, a date on this? I, I don't know how long. Would it be two weeks or should we do four weeks? And I know you sent an email to Mr. Parker, but I assume part of his not communicating is because now lawyers are involved, and so you're sort of speaking to his lawyer, and yeah, it slows things down. So I would say um, your December 4th meeting is getting full, yeah, so you I, might want to go to the December 18th meeting to talk more about this. Does that sound agreeable? Yeah. Okay, so um, we'll continue this at the December. Should we just set a time? What do we have on for that night so far, Chris? The only thing I'm sure about is that the, um, the chair of the CRC and the assistant town manager would like to come in and talk to you about master plan updating. Right. So that they've asked to come and meet with you that night. So as far as I know, I think that's the only thing, unless other things get continued. Um, Ms. Ms. Field Sadler, are you aware of anything else? I am not. Um, so which should we put first, CRC or or th this? Okay. So we could do like a 705. All right. I don't think we have to make a motion, but can we just say December 18th at 7.05, we'll meet again. Thank you all for coming. If you could have continued your, your meet and greets out there so we can keep going with our meeting, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so our next item is number five, planning and zoning. We have a zoning subcommittee report. Maria, I believe you were going up. Oh, sorry, good timing. Maria chaired this evening. So she'll make the report. I did. Uh, we had a very good discussion. Um, a familiar face showed up, Mr. Rob Crowner. So that was really fun to have him <laughs> back. Um, Janet presented, again, her inclusionary zoning report. And we had a really good discussion with um, a lot of the public 
people who have been involved in the past at town meetings um, and uh, try to get inclusionary zoning passed. So it was really a good discussion and we have next steps for that. And I presented a sort of um, the missing middle. It's about affordability of housing in Amherst and um, provided a lot of ways to unlock different types of housing. Um, so that's not just infill, but it's sort of um, unlocking the ability for more of the community to become active developers in a way to increase the housing stock and which hopefully will increase affordability of housing stock. Um, so we have next steps for that as well. And then um, we're hoping to just keep these as running sort of working items until we figure out a way to push it forward to the planning board for review and then possibly to town council. So we're just keeping these sort of as our homework in a way so that um, we feel like we can be productive and proactive about certain things. So I don't know if anyone else wants to add to how we, what we discussed. Most of us were there, actually. I think it's just <laughs> Jack and Michael who were not there. I, I strongly considered it, but yeah. uh, <laughs> I had to make up some but time at work, yeah. Okay. Up there in spirit. <laughs> you are, you are, yes. Thank you. Um, is there public comment on the zoning subcommittee? Okay. Uh, well, shoot. She was there. Um, other, I don't think we need to do that. Uh, old business, we're gonna go with the um, signing of decisions for the SPR and SPP for Southeast Street. You have them, or am I the only I'll one I'll pass the them, decisions or? down to you. We have the originals here. Um, Ms. Gray Mullen needs to sign it in two places and others who voted in the affirmative need to sign it in one place. I did read them. They're very long and very detailed. Thank you, Chris. I think you captured the essence and the details so people can go back someday and know all the good work we did. So we will sign that and we're all here for that. Is there any other old business that you all have? We good? All right. New business. Um, Item A, the FEMA flood mapping project, notice of appeal period from November 22nd, 2019 to January 20th, 2020. I believe, Chris, you have an update for us on that. So we have our preliminary maps. Um, we all had an opportunity to look at them um, quite a while ago. I think it might have been June or July. Um, uh, then FEMA you know, took a while to um, get around to the administrative and process aspect of this. So they have finally, um, they have finally sent a letter to the town stating that the appeal period, the 90 day appeal period will start on, d on November 22nd and it will end 90 days later, which I believe is February 20th. Mm -hmm. So that gives anyone who um, doesn't agree with the maps an opportunity to appeal. Appealing is a serious matter. You, you have to hire a technical people, engineers, et cetera, to um, prove your case. Um, <laughs> Jack's like, yes. I don't and, <laughs> yeah. um, we, we know of one person who is likely to appeal. I don't know of anybody else. Um, we're going to uh, publish something on the town website about this to draw people's attention to it. Um, appeals would come to the planning department and then we would forward them to our consultant at AECOM, AECOM, and they would um, determine whether the appeal had, sub, had merit or not, and then they would forward it to FEMA. Um, so as I said, I think we're probably gonna get at least one appeal. Um, at the end of the appeal period, um, once all the appeals have been resolved, uh, FEMA, FEMA issues a letter um, kind of wrapping things up, and then the town has uh, six months, it's called a six month compliance period, and in that six months, um, the town needs to adopt the maps and adopt um, certain changes to our zoning bylaw and potentially to our wetlands bylaw to incorporate reference to the maps. And we are in the process of exploring exactly what that means. 
I don't know whether it's going to be, you know, three pages or one sentence or what it is, but we'll figure that out and we'll let you know, and then you'll have an opportunity, both the zoning subcommittee and the planning board will have an opportunity to review that. So then once we've put together our new regulations and we have our new maps, we'll be bringing them to town council. Our current plan is that um, the first town council meeting, this is a plan I worked out with Dave Zomek, assistant town manager, so I'm not sure that it's actually been approved by the uh, council. But anyway, what we would like to do is um, make an original or a preliminary presentation to town council to explain to them what this project is all about, why we're doing it, and what it will get us in the end. Um, so that would occur, we hope, in early January. Then we would go back to them probably in late January with our consultant and give them the full technical presentation so they can ask all kinds of technical questions. Um, and then sometime later when town council feels comfortable, we'd go back to them and ask for a vote. And we're hoping that our consultant will be able to come back that night when, when town council is voting. So hopefully we'll wrap this up by March. That's our goal. Um, we'll, we'll see how it goes, but we'll, we'll work based on that plan. Jack? Yeah, I'm just uh, curious about the appeal, given the, the technical uh, uh, detail of this. And can just anybody just write in a letter? I mean, how does it, does appeal have to some, have some basis on it before it's really considered? The appeal has to have some technical basis, yes. And the person who's thinking of appealing probably will have engineers to help him out with the appeal. Um, but it, it is a pretty serious matter, so you know you have to be pretty robust in your presentation. It can't just be a letter. Any other questions? Michael? Have the maps changed since we saw them in uh, the summer? No, the maps have not changed. They're online if you want to look at them. Um, and if you have a problem getting, finding them online, I can tell you how to get there, okay? Thank you. Uh, so we'll move on to other, any, um, any other topics unanticipated for, okay, great. Uh, form A, A and R. We do have a Form A. Let me see what, oh, a project that you're very familiar with. Amir McGee yes. has two properties and he wants to combine them so he can build his building. So I don't know if you need much of an explanation about that. Um, do you want me to come around with the maps and show you? No, we got it. <laughs> we, we, no. Just no, same, no, 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 same, his, just same his same two part. lots they're making into one. No, it's, it's memorized. Yes. <laughs> You'll authorize Ms. You would have thought it would have been done earlier, but it's, it's a, yeah. Do you want me to pass around a little map showing? Pam went to the trouble of making this beautiful map, so I feel like I should pass it around to you. This. We'll look at it. Best <laughs> Can we keep them? So you're going to authorize Ms. Gray Mullen to sign these plans? Yeah, it just uh, I'm good with it. Okay. Yes. Great. Yeah, it just makes it easier. One one plot. Great. All right. So uh, ZBA item nine. I haven't learned of anything new since when okay. I told you the last time. Great. Thank you. Item ten: upcoming SPP, SPR, SUB applications. The only one we have is the little canopy that's being put in behind Enterprise Rent a Car, so that they oh. can wash cars in the winter time and not be bothered by the snow and ice and everything. So that'll be coming to you on December 4th. Oh, that's also okay. December. Oh, is yep. that the little thing you said? There? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, 11, Planning Board Committee and Liaison Reports. Boy, you took, you did, wasted no time in killing off that parking group. <laughs> like, <laughs> downtown parking working group, sorry. The, the, Can you tell me to take it off? not even cold. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I thought you asked me to take it off last time. <laughs> Not a reflection on your level of effort. And no respect. No. <laughs> spend. <laughs> no one wants an update. No. Okay. So, um, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. 
Uh, we have not met. Um, is there an so upcoming meeting? I don't think I've gotten an email. I haven't seen one either. Yeah, usually there's I, one in December, so yeah. I'm like, uh, okay. As long there, as there was going to be some discussion on the 40R uh, uh, bill mm. with regard to the uh, supermajority versus majority, and I think they were going to have a breakout session on that, but I haven't heard at all. Did anyone go to the Monday meeting by uh, I Ms. Clutchman? Okay. She's the person that spoke at the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. I was doing my parking thing. No. I couldn't go. Thank you. Um, Michael, Community Preservation Act Committee. Yeah, CPAC has had uh, two meetings this fall. Uh, one was basically um, housekeeping and uh, mm. ed editing a piece of uh, uh, the document for requesting proposals. The second one was actually substantive. Uh, the town has received a grant to uh, in the, in the uh, amount of, uh, I believe it's $400,000, to uh, uh, build a playground in Kendrick Park uh, as part of the long-term Kendrick Park rehabil rehabilitation project. Uh, the town needs to contribute something around $265,000, I believe was the number, to match that $400,000. Uh, and it had to be done right away because uh, of the timing of the state grant. Mm. Uh, so the committee approved that, even though it was out of order and uh, uh, totally irregular. Uh, it seemed like the right thing to do since uh, the, the timing was essential. So that's part of the uh, the money that has, will will have will have, will other would otherwise have been spent next fall next spring. Um, so that's we've got a head start on the spending for next year. So it will get built next year. Uh, no, or I designed. believe the design is due. On the by the end of uh, June, of June 20, okay. uh, and the construction has to be done very quickly. So it presumably will be completed by that time in June in 21. So it should be available for most of the summer of 2021. So they still have to put out an RFP and everything to bring a designer on board. I believe so. So, so. I know. I, I knew that. Sorry. I knew that this was um, approved. This is a, a nearly seven hundred thousand dollar approval for a, a, a children's playground in Kendrick Park. Is that am I understanding? So That's far? correct. In in one segment of Kendrick Park, there are four segments of Kendrick Park that were allowed on a, re, a plan developed some years ago. Is there going to be a roller coaster there? No, I don't believe so. <laughs> uh, unless, you, uh, perhaps, if you'd care to fund one, they might be able to put it in well, the I'm northern. I'm wondering section. what the seven. I mean, seven hundred thousand dollars seems like a lot of money Doesn't for a it? children's play, playground. The real part. At, at, at an interesting part. Of, I mean, Kendrick Park is a beautiful park. And don't make, get me wrong, but it's also it's also whatever it was called the gateway to UMass. It's it's a UMass. I mean, those kids need to play too. I understand, but. Um, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, my, it's, my it's head's It's a spinning. lot of money. Yeah. Many Golf of us, Park, can I say, do you know, Chris, how much that cost last year? Just to, so we have Golf something. Golf Park is about 1.3 million. Okay. And that was a water park, so when you get water in there, that's more, but just to put it in perspective. It was explained to us that the bulk of the money and the, the reason for the high price is the fact that any playground nowadays has to have a rubberized surface. Wood chips, sand. Bad. Loose dirt is no longer Bad. acceptable. Uh, any playground meeting ADA requirements has to have a rubberized surface, and that's the bulk of the cost. For well, I'm going to be just going to go with that for a minute because it just seems like too much fun not to, like you set it up. But so, is there a requirement that when when that that there's a certain height that somebody has to bounce? For that rubberized surface, for it to be, no. you know, sort of suitable, or mm -hmm. I, that's a flip question. Not to my knowledge. Yeah. Wow. Cool. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> Chris, I just wanted to note that it's possible that the DPW Engineering Group would um, do the design for this playground, cool. um, and they would work with uh, playground equipment distributors. 
and using the 1975 standards. Sorry, I just no. had to throw that in there. <laughs> no, they would use more current standards. Actually, actually part of the uh, use of the uh, existing, uh, existing equipment is that if it, if it matches, if the playground equipment itself matches the equipment that's in Groff Park, it'll be simpler to maintain because I'll have to keep fewer spare parts. I, I just want to mention the dog part does not cost the town any money. No rubber. Just, just in case people are worried about these big capital projects that are coming. Well, that's a relief. Yeah. Chris. So I just wanted to reiterate what Mr. Um, Bert Whistle said, which is that we did get a $400,000 grant from the mm -hmm. state, mm -hmm. and the town will be putting in 258000 or 56000 something like that. And that will be spread over a number of years. Um, I think they're considering taking a, ten bar, year, a, a ten borrowing, 10-year yeah. loan. Oh, okay. So it's going to be a kind of a small amount each year, just to <laughs> assuage your fears. I think it's great. I think it's great. Yeah. It's great. It's like, Although, it's $25,000 a year for them to pay, that's, that's right? That's a small price to pay. Oh. That's very reasonable. Now that you put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> We'll need another grant for that one. Uh, David, Agricultural Commission. Okay. And Michael, Design Review Board. Can I jump into the Farm Committee? Um, quick item. Is there any, like, what are the issues that the Farm Committee works on? Because I feel. Uh, I haven't been to Pari, Pari did it before. And they, they stopped meeting for a long time. But they're trying, yeah, they didn't have a quorum, so we, we actually haven't heard much from them for a couple of years. Okay. Just, oh, just on the committees, the, the housing, what happened? We don't have on? an actual housing position there. Oh. Uh, the reason why Greg was sort of listed is because he was a member of, same thing with Downtown Parking Working Group, we didn't actually have, you know, it, okay. it's, yeah. Um, I know our list is looking shorter, but why do you want some more committees to join Jack? Me? Is there something he me? can do, Chris? Me? There's zoning subcommittee I'm, I'm, we've been I'm, missing I'm going, you. I'm going to make the next one, maybe. So maybe, okay. I, really, I, I appreciate all the work you guys are doing on that. It's, and it's heavy lifting, I know. It is, but it, yeah. it will come here. It, yeah. it, um, we'll be counting on you and Michael to ask the questions to really flush it out and make our stuff even better. So your, your moment will come. Zoning subcommittee, we already heard about that. So our report of chair, I have nothing. Report of staff? Nothing, no. What about DRB? Did we ask about that? What about what? DRB did some We oh, did. Did Sorry, Mr. No, Burt was... Oh. We got sidetracked. Oh, I thought... Oh. You're right, because we went back to the, okay. Um, design Review Board. I'm delighted to report that I have nothing to report. <laughs> well, I already knew that. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, thank you for your fine work. Um, <laughs> do you want to make a motion for a joint adjournment? Y no, yes, Janet. I, I actually have, a, I have an item that I, Chris, um, is there's going to be a meeting on December 9th on the potential 40R around downtown? Is that, did you tell me that? I just want that. To, there was something. It, yeah. There was I think something that's the 19th. The 19th. December 19th. Did yes. I send out, I sent out a list of upcoming you meetings to you. I don't have a copy of it here, but I believe it's December 19th, which is it's a Thursday. December 19th, but no time was given, because I have it in as all day. <laughs> yeah. No, it'll probably be in the evening, and I don't know if we've chosen a, a room yet. So, so the recommendation is that this 40R overlay be like is it all the downtown or parts of the downtown? Has that been picked out yet? It's most of the downtown. It's the BG district and the BL district. But all it is is it's an overlay. It provides an opportunity for developers to um, develop something. It doesn't mean that the entire downtown is going to be rebuilt. No, no way does it mean that. It means the developer would potentially choose a small location to consider development. Um, this has to go through a lot of review before it's made law, if it ever does become law. Um, it's going to come to us in a kind of rough format. Um, the consultants who are working on it are hoping to wrap up this project. They owe us a plan showing where things are gonna go, what 
what buildings might be, how tall they might be, what their massing might be, um, some form of a form-based code uh, zoning bylaw that would accompany this. And then um, the planning board, and the, well, first the zoning subcommittee will have an opportunity to decide whether it's something we want to pursue. And then the planning board will have that opportunity. And if you decide that it's a good idea, you would bring it to town council. So this is really in its early stages. We wanted to be able to explore the idea of 40R. It's been talked about for years, especially at the zoning subcommittee. And now we've explored it, and we're going to see if it really will work for Amherst, and we don't know if it will. Just, I was interested in making sure that the, na the neighborhoods that could be affected would be notified, but we've talked about that, too. Anything else anyone has? Yeah. Oh, yes. Is there, um, so, Christine, you were way ahead of the game, and I only um, was able to read this proposed bill that you had brought to our attention at the last meeting since then. Is there, can we, I mean, and maybe with, this has already been done, can we refer this bill to the town council uh, for their, because Which bill? The, this is the house, this 3507. is the 3507 proposed by <laughs> Baker Polito, which is the Housing Choice Initiative. Um, because, because one of the most dramatic things, I think, and is just changing the voting requirements for the approval of zoning amendments related to housing choice initiatives, to put it succinctly. And that I, I, I would encourage the town council to begin considering this in, in this stage so that they're ready for it if this becomes enacted. Sure. In, uh, so do you have a, um, would the planning board want me to put together a memo um, a cover memo for this bill and send it to the town manager and ask him to bring it to town council? Is that how this could go forward? Sure, just as yeah. an FYI for them. Yep, yep. And, 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 I, I but just to respond to, uh, and, and I think that the cover memo, just to, mindful of the many, 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 many things that you do, Chris, the cover memo doesn't need to be much more than, than the memo, I think, that Baker um, has to this bill which enumerate, has a couple of, several bullet points, and then the change about the, um, the voting requirements for the zoning amendments. I think that reiterating that is sufficient. I, I would understand the bill better, because I, I read the bill, and I read the cover letter, and I had a bunch of questions. So I'm not sure if the bill doesn't pass, you know, what does the bill say? What are the implications? I didn't feel like that was, I had a real explanation. So there must be some, at the state level, some like blow by blow about what would be changed because there's a lot of changes. But I, I, if, I mean, it may never pass. So why would we be sending it to the town council like as a recommendation or FYI? Because I didn't even understand the ramifications of the bill having read through it. And I was like, oh, I'd like to know more. But I didn't feel like I understood it all. And obviously, um, it, the governor supports the bill, but there must be more to it than, than one side. So sometimes it takes a bill a couple or a few times to go through, and it's already been tried a couple of times. So this is sort of like his third effort at it, and what's different this time is it has bipartisan um, buy-in on it. Um, so where it's at, I'm not sure, but I actually requested a meeting with, with um, Representative Dom, and I'm meeting with her before our next meeting to find out what's happening with it. So are, I'm just wondering, is the planning board supporting this bill? I mean, I don't feel like I could take a position without understanding it, and I don't... I, mean, I don't think it's... Ta I, I'm not about taking... I don't want the memo to... I just want them to be aware that this is... Um, I just think it's, I mean, I just wonder if the councils will read this and have the same question. It's just, it's a pretty dense bill. And so I just didn't, I, I read it and thought this is really interesting. I don't really understand how much this would cover. There's a whole thing where you can have the voting requirements not change for certain things if you do something else. And I was just like, okay, now I'm getting really lost. And it's sort of. It's only that if it did pass, um, then that would be law, you know. And, some of the efforts that we've been working on would no longer be needed. So would the memo that I would write on your behalf be more to the point of, we just wanted to bring this to your attention? That's what I was thinking. Yes. That's what I was thinking. Jack? So, Christine, you sound like 
you're, you're on this, but I know the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission will have additional discussion on it. I took notes from the last one, and I thought we would talk about it. So I guess after you talk with Mindy, I can recheck my notes. Maybe something will happen with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. And then, but I, I thought there was some interesting rationale that it would be good for us to, to talk about. Chris? Do you want to have another discussion at the planning board level after um, Christine Gray Mullen speaks with Mindy Dom? and then send it to the town council? Yeah, Does sure. that make sense? Sure. Yeah. So, because if you go to the Massachusetts, you know what site I'm talking about, Chris, where you can track the bills, .gov. I don't know if you guys ever go there. I have a tracker on for this one. But anyways, it hasn't really been updated since last, uh, last summer, but a lot of the bills aren't. So I don't know if they're just not keeping up. It says it goes to, so it was, usually it goes to House Committee for study because then kind of like our zoning subcommittee and then they bring it to the to the House. But what did happen is they decided to send it to both at the same time, the House and the Senate. So it's supposedly in study in both of them. So I was hoping that she might be able to, because um, I know they're, they're moving on bills now. So. so I will let you know if I know more. And you can watch on the website, but like I said, there wasn't anything updated. Yeah. So do we want to put it on the agenda for the 4th or the 18th? 18th. Yeah. Let's do the 18th. We can a meeting from yeah. The We've got a lot on the 4th. Yeah, Maria. Did you ever have that meeting with David Zomek and Lynn and someone else and someone else? Oh, yes. Um, yes, someone else. It was um, Paul, David, the town manager, the assistant town manager, the president of the council, the president of the CRC, Chris Bestrup, director of planning, and myself. Um, it was a lot about planning and prioritizing, but bigger than, so it, they're talking about the master plan and they're talking about like recodification or updating the zoning <clears throat> bylaws. So a lot of their talk was um, about workloads for town staff and the council, and there seemed to be more thought that has to go into that because they both have to go off and look at their workloads because there's just too much to do and not enough time and not enough people. Um, I, of course, I was of the also cautious of that because I don't, want us to drown and I have to make sure we have to make sure that planning department has enough bandwidth to be able to help us but um, they were very understanding that they know that it, it's a lot for us and it will put a big um, redoing the master plan and the plan redoing the, the zoning bylaw fixing it updating it recodification are we are we doing that is that the planning board Who's, I mean, well, who's deciding that? Chris can, yeah. So in terms of the master plan, um, the CRC and the town council, the town council has referred the master plan to the planning board and the CRC for study for um, what they're hoping is going to be uh, an up update. Um, they're hoping it's not going to be a heavy update, that it's going to just add things having to do with Resiliency, climate change, um, sustainability, um, you know, probably affordable housing, um, something about the change in demographics that we've experienced in the last 10 years, just to bring it up to date where we are now, because the master plan was really written sometime between 2005 and 2010. Um, the town council isn't expecting that the master plan is going to be redone until probably 2030. So this is kind of an interim update. So they're asking the planning board and the CRC to work together with staff to figure out exactly what we want to do with the master plan. I have some ideas about things that we need to infuse throughout the master plan or things that we need to you know, bullet point, put in various sections. I've actually started a little list, um, which I can share with you. So as I said before, uh, Mandy Joe Haneke and Dave Zomek would like to come and speak with you on the 18th to talk about this. In addition to that, um, there's a plan afoot to um, re redo the zoning bylaw in its entirety, and the project would probably take a year. 
and it may or may not include all of the things that are on the planning board's list uh, wish list. Um, it will include a lot of those things. It will also include fixing a lot of the things that are wrong with the bylaw, fixing things where it's um, conflicting. Uh, there are many places where one thing conflicts with another. If you read the parking um, section, for instance, or the science section. So that effort would be to try to just get it all cleaned up, put as many amendments into it as we can, and some of the things are going to be too big for that project, and we'll have to leave them on the shelf for a while. But that is the desire of town council, that we would work on the master plan and work on zoning over the course of the next year. So hopefully you will be uh, on board with that and um, enthusiastic. Just to add, the, the year, um, year and a half was very important to them because they're elected um, councilors and they really want this to be one of their wins, something that happens um, in case this term that they're in. When's their term in? It's a two like, year term, isn't it? It's a three year for the first time. Oh. So they have that extra year. So um, they really want to, as they, I've heard them say, they really want to get something substantial done. So uh, Janet. So I have little pieces of the puzzle. I talked to my two district counselors who said they've been waiting for zoning changes and they're eager to do them. And then I went to the CRC meeting where they were talking about this and um, it looked like they were really looking to the planning board for um, direction on the master plan. And they weren't, um, they're not really decided yet about how much they wanted to undertake as the CRC. But, um, and then Dave Zomek was talking about like a list of changes, but it was it seemed like a really long list, kind of what you started to sort of, you know, what you were saying. And so um, since the planning board is legally by the state statute sort of in charge of master plans and has done that, and so, I think we should think about our role in that, and it just it seems like these discussions are all kind of percolating, but it'd be great to have the planning board sort of part of the whole thing and figure out what we can do. You know, I mean, the, the year and timeline may not be, we don't really have, I guess we do have terms, but um, to think about like, if you're, you know, updating the ASIC plan, revising it, we're supposed to be doing this every five or 10 years, and it's been almost 10, and so, do we want to involve the public and, cons you know, we've, we've talked about this at the zoning subcommittee too, so I just want to put those pieces in there. So I, I think what you just said is exactly what's happening. It's percolating and they're trying to come up with the plan and it's the, you know, the town manager and the department heads and the president of the town council and the, and the chair of the CRC and they, that's why they asked me to be there and that's, so they're trying to come up with a plan, and, and that's why they're coming to us on the 18th. And I mean, the public, of course, will be involved as soon as the actual work starts. But right now, it's just sort of like the pre-plan, like what is the scope of work? And once the scope of work starts, then we'll be doing, as what the town council has also been clear, they want a, a, a revision of the master plan, not a redo. So, but you know, the specifics of that still has to be sort of spelled out, which would be us. Yeah, I guess the point is, I think that we should think about ourselves as our, we're an independent board and what our role is in that. And so I, I'm interested in this process and the idea of it, but I just wonder, we're a separate committee or a board, and so am I missing something? Yeah, I, I think the point is we would, like do the work with planning board or, and then we approve it and then this would, it would go to town council for their approval. So that's why they want to be involved too. Okay. Uh, I, David and then Chris. Well, I will be deliberately a little bit pro provocative, <laughs> okay? Uh, while I understand that the change in the governance is confusing and there's a lot of the work. The change in the governance from the, as a result of the charter from town meeting is, and there's a lot of work to be done to hopefully not fully reinvent the wheel, but really it seems to me that my sense is for the past year we've received really conflicting messages from the town council and whoever else has been sending. And I agree with Janet, I think that we should, and this is what I was trying to, what I was advocating for, last time at the zoning subcommittee um, that we should 
set our own work plan and and just keep on and that's what and that's was the idea with the sending them the, the proposed bill just you guys got to start thinking about this stuff and begin to formulate and not just you know be pre-planning this stuff but but this is the act of governance and if you can't do it then we need either different representatives or different form but we need but I think that we should be we as the planning board should be moving forward there it's very complicated it's very weedy very detail detail and 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 continue to just push things to or push things to them so that they respond because otherwise we're going to continue to spin wheels here I think for more and more time while they're waiting for a big win we have no direction from them we need to start thinking about what our priorities are and list setting out the issues for them to consider that we can't act on. Chris? I think that with regard to the master plan, the town council needs to do something with the master plan. Mm -hmm. The charter calls on them to adopt the master plan. And they're looking at a master plan that was signed and adopted by the planning board in 2010, but it was really written over a period of you know, 2008 to 2010. So they want to, they don't want to adopt the master plan exactly as it is. Yeah. They want to make sure that it includes things that everybody cares about now, like climate change, like sustainability, like energy conservation, and all of those things that we probably weren't focused on as much back in 2008 or 2010. So they're looking for your help to bring the master plan up to date that's the term that they've been using, is update the master plan, not change it, not throw it out and start over. They just want to update it so they can be able to comfortably adopt it according to the charter. Well, then, really, if the town council has specific, has updates that they're, they, I really think that instead of mind reading what those are, we should know what, what areas that they're thinking of. And, and how to proceed, and where the funding is for, for that, whether they're expecting that to be our time, your time, or whether a consultant like the master plan process was before, you know, contracted out. So that, I mean, the town council I'm finding to be really um, just, it, they're, they're not, we, they're, they are not, sort of being responsive, I think, to the planning board needs. So I think they think that they're being responsive by making sure that you are in the know, up to date, you know, that you, at this point, you know, it's taken them a while to get here, but now that they have kind of realized what needs to be done, they're reaching out to you and saying, oh, the master plan is the planning board's baby. We need to help and ask the, ask the planning board to work with us to update the master plan. It's their, their task, it's their body, um, and, and that's what they're doing. They're okay. reaching out to you and saying, here, this needs to be updated, we want to adopt it, but we don't want to adopt it the way it is, but hopefully you will update it enough. And they will give us their opinion about what should be included and what should be updated. They've started to do that through yeah. Dave Zomek and through the CRC, and they, what they're hoping is that um, by working with the CRC, the CRC will report to the town council, and by the, by the time this actually gets to town council, the CRC will be totally on board with it, and they'll be able to talk to the town council and get them to adopt what you have come up with. And so, that's why they're coming on the 18th to yes, start this to, process. Exactly. I would suggest everyone um, read that master plan again. And this time when you read it, you're next. Um, no areas that, especially on sustainability and that kind of thing, like, oh, this is an area that's going to need to be um, updated. First Jack and then Janet. So do we anticipate that we'll have some sort of ad hoc committee amongst us to address this? Because I don't think this is the, we can't really do anything during regular planning board It could be zoning subcommittee. No, because I'm not a part of that. Well, <laughs> so, but it would still well, come would, through us, but 
I think as this gets um, gelled out, it'll become apparent whether or not like a consultant is needed or a designated yeah. staff member. You know, I think it's, we want the town council to sign off on the master plan. I think, it, I don't even think they've really read it close enough to realize how much, they're all saying they want to keep it to a minimum, but you know how it goes, you know. But it, once that, like I said, the scope of work and the, and the amount of work that needs to be updated, then I think Chris will be able to have better suggestions. So yes, I've been to a lot of CRC meetings, and I, I have to say that, um, I mean, the meeting today was very inconclusive about what how they wanted to proceed, which is well, a lot of CRC meetings are inconclusive. But I think what I'm hearing is that the head of the town council, the head of town government, are talking about the planning board revising the entire zoning bylaw and doing a master plan in the next year or so in, tire, in time for re-election for the town council. And I just think, I mean, when you talk about things gelling, is like I think that's a really heavy lift for the board and we should decide whether what we think we want to do. It's just the idea of revising the entire zoning bylaw. I mean, we've been, the zoning subcommittee, we've been working on all sorts of different things and talking about stuff and all of a sudden, our, the idea that we're going to be revising a, the entire bylaw in the next year, plus the master plan, just seems sort of it's sort of a, it's sort of hard to understand. It seems overwhelming. But it doesn't seem overwhelming. It, it does it to is, me. <laughs> it, it is overwhelming, and it would take staff time and also you know a lot of our time. And um, I'm glad you were invited to that meeting to talk about that. But I think this is something we really have to think about as a board. I, I think the master plan is, is the thought of do it first. They want that done in a few months. Um, we don't do it. We help guide staff. This is why the discussions are with them mostly right now, because they do the heavy lifting. They would be, you know, and if Chris feels the need, then they need to go hire a consultant. But it, they haven't figured out how much lifting there is to do. That's what I'm saying is the discussion. So, they're very aware that it has to come to us, but we won't do the heavy lifting on that. Same thing with the recodification. It sounds like a lot of the changes are driven um, by the building commissioner, and he's done this before, and he knows certain things that he needs to get fixed. And then I think it would be zoning subcommittee and the planning board that are like, so what are the other issues we want to put into that scope? So just, I want to say, David, I don't think any of our work we're doing right now will, will not be worth anything. I think- It's not that. No, but I'm just saying, I think we're doing good works that will possibly be included in that. And I also think, again, a consultant, if it's too much. I mean, they're just trying to, they want to get something done. And, and I'm happy for that, because you're right. There's the town council, they had to come up to speed. We're, you know, we're waiting and waiting, and they're overwhelmed. They have so many things to do. But they seem to be taking these two efforts very seriously, which I'm glad about, terrified that it will be too much work. But I, you know, I think Chris will cry ugh before we do, because that's where the heavy lifting is gonna happen. But as more comes, I mean, it was a very pre-talk in that meeting. I mean, they were really just feeling out resources and trying to figure out how much work this is gonna be and when they would realistically like to get it done. And town council, they're just trying to say that, you know, I think we're, I wouldn't want to see it either. It's about bringing them education and bringing them up to speed. And then if we brought them up to speed and then they were voted out or decided not to run again, I, that would make me sad because as we were talking about inclusionary zoning and all these zones, it, it, you know, we, we don't want to, we want to get it done before the people who have come up to speed leave. So um, I think there'll be more to report really soon. Um, but they are coming on the 18th, so that means, uh, it, you know, they're trying to move on it. So, um, yeah, Chris. So I think it would be a really good idea, even if you don't read the whole master plan cover to cover, you know, thumb through it and see what, just sort of remind yourself of what's in it. I, I took a stab at creating a list of things that I thought needed to be updated the other day, 
and I actually came up with more things than I expected to. So, Me too. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think it is going to be a lot of work, but we'll chip away at it bit by bit, and if we all work together on it, I think we'll get there. Could, could we get, you know, I've heard people ask for this several times at CRC, and I think um, Shalini Balmilne asked about it. Um, like, can, is there a way to get, like, a matrix of, you know, there's a whole 14 pages of strategies, like, what was done, what wasn't done, and putting it, I mean, I hate to say the, you know, the word Excel sheet, but um, a way of taking that chart and, like, running a column or two about what was done, you know, not, like, completed, but these things were done, because there obviously are more than one thing that could be done under different items, because that, I think the CRC was really having trouble seeing that whole picture, and then it came up at the um, master plan forum. Yeah, yeah. So I have trouble with that myself because I've presented the master plan to the CRC and when I started going through it, I realized, oh, some of these things have been partially done or they've been done, you know, some of it has been done and we've decided not to do the other part. So it's going to be hard to describe it in a matrix in that way. And some of the things are ongoing that we're going to continue to do forever. So. We can try to put it into a matrix, but I think it's going to be challenging. When I read through it, I mostly just read the titles, like the section, and not didn't get into the, the narrative. Um, but that's one way that could be marked up, those, um, you know, like either struck or highlighted or a, a parag um, parentheses adding more. David? Yeah. Chris, actually, can you send a... Oh, I apologize for this. You, your, your presentation that you did, I, I don't know whether it was to the town's council or CRC, a few weeks ago on the master plan, that did really kind of, that was a really great summary of a lot of it. If, if that link could be. I can send you the whole PowerPoint. Yeah. <laughs> Tell your content provider. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it just, we want work, we want to do good work, but we don't want to be um, overworked either, I hear you. Um, so hopefully there'll be more to report back on on the 4th, and then the CRC will come on the 18th. Anything else? Because I told Janet would be done at 9.15, and oh I see there's only two minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to go home and watch the debates? Nope. Oh. How do they start? Summary in the morning. Uh. <laughs> anything else? Anyone have anything? Um, I, yes. I think for some of these documents, I don't know how the zoning subcommittee is, is working with the editing, but there's some, uh, the technology's there for people working in a document together, yeah. and that would be, I, I, that's just how I do my work this day and age versus scribbling in the margins and stuff like that. If that is a step that people are willing to take, I would be in favor of, of it. For, for like the, yeah, you'd use Google Docs, Google or, Docs or, or, or Office 365. Yeah. You're editing and they're editing it. Yeah, yeah. So. We could come up with, in zoning, some, maybe some rule, like what we're, you know, like you strike it and it says who struck it or highlight it, or um, we could do that. Because the current one is in PDF, right? Online. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because I would like the word document anyways for going through it because yeah. going through the PDF, I'm like, it was too big to bring in Evernote and I didn't want to start printing pages. I would appreciate a, a word. And one with the permissions off because usually when you guys send them, I know it's just your municipality thing, everything's like document control. Like when Jeff sends me word, I'm always like, I can't. I can't get into it. It's yeah, yeah. Enable. You could put a draft. That's a, or mm, not the word draft, but maybe draft. Put like a, a watermark across it. Draft and then and unlock it. Okay. Nine fifteen, Janet. Can I have a motion to close this gig? Second. Okay. All in favor? Great. Thank you. Thank you, Amherst Media.